Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the shop. Well, today I got what I think is a pretty good video. We're going to be building a welding bottle bar table. You can see that we've got an old abandoned welding bottle right here. You can see that uh, they've got the top completely off. It is completely empty, been dried, cleaned and dried. We're gonna, we've got a disc brake rotor right here we're gonna be using. And we've got an old drum gear or drum hub from a skid steer or track drive uh, bobcat type piece of equipment. A welding bottle cap. We've got a piece of quarter inch flat plate right here. We're gonna be using to cut up for some brackets. And of course, We've got a 40 inch round, four inch thick piece of Western red cedar from Tumwater, Washington that has already been uh, finished with some clear coat and we're gonna use that for the bar top. So let's get started on today's video. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, remove the rust that is on this uh, gear or hub. Uh, apparently this thing's been sitting out uh, behind the shed, if you will. Uh, and it's accumulated a little bit of rust and I want to get all that uh, cleaned off I'm not really certain of the finish that they're gonna uh, ultimately put on this after it's all installed um, they're talking about uh, just uh, like a clear coat or a wax finish they want it to look uh, somewhat original you know the old metal look authentic look that's the look I believe that they're going for all right, so to anchor this uh, to the ground, I've just stenciled out uh, a couple of tabs right here, and I'm going to be welding these in between a couple of the gear teeth, and I'm going to drill some holes in this, and this is how we're going to anchor it to the ground. How to do that? I've got the little brute right here, mag drill from Champion. This is a perfect tool for this right here. This is a half-inch diameter hole, and uh, I'm just going to pop, pop them right in the center, and then... Uh, that's the way we're going to use to anchor it, uh, anchor it to the ground. <clears throat> Couldn't imagine drilling those out on a drill press or something. I, how, uh, how, how much harder that would be. All right, with all the holes drilled out, uh, it's time to do some plasma cutting. So I broke out the H75SC here from HTP and did a little freehand uh, plasma cutting. Again, I couldn't think of a different way to do it. This uh, seemed like it was the uh, the best option that I had right here. This is some quarter quarter inch thick plate, and didn't take too long at all to cut those out. From there, just took it over to the Burt King, and just cleaned up the edges a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to get them perfect by any means. I just trying to you know, smooth out some of the edges from the plasma cutting. And, you know, uh, this Burr King has really been a, 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 a good asset to the shop right here. I've had it now for a couple of years and, and use it almost daily. It's uh, really a handy a piece of equipment to have in the shop. All right, you can see those uh, tabs. They just kind of fit in between the teeth like that. And I'm putting it in about every third one and just welding them around. You can see they stick out just a little bit beyond the end of the teeth. And that's the way I planned it right there. I wanted to have a little bit of room with that half inch hole in there for the bolt head to fit on there easily. And uh, once this is bolted to the ground, I don't really think you're gonna really, you know, see that sticking out like that. So I welded them from both sides that I'm just showing right here, the top side right here, uh, all the way around. And I ultimately flipped around the other side and got a weld on the bottom side as well. All right, trying to muscle this thing up onto my welding table. Welding bottles are heavy and awkward. And uh, this is uh, going to sit right up on top of this gear head. And it is just about the right size. This was a little bit challenging for me, trying to get this welding bottle nice and plumb on here. You know, I started out, it was good. And, you know, it was slightly out of plumb. And I knew once I put a weld right there that it would pull it over. But it pulled it over a lot more than I wanted to. I ended up having to cut that one tack off and uh, you know, straighten it back up a little bit. But uh, once I got a couple of tacks all the way around, um, I was able to keep it nice and plumb. So I knew I was going to be welding this thing all the way around and I'm starting out with MIG welder right here and that's the way I was doing it. I'm just kind of filling it in all the way around 
And I was probably thinking at this point I was going to put a couple of passes of, uh, with the MIG all the way around there. But uh, I decided that maybe some dual shield flux core right here would be the answer. I fired up <clears throat> the Propulse 300. I've got it spooled with some uh, 45 thousandths dual shield flux core. And I've got some 75, 25, 75% argon, 25% CO2. And I've got it up, up to about uh, 60 CFH for this right here. Wire feed speed, somewhere around 450 inches a minute. My plan was to go all the way around right here with just a single pass, thinking that that was going to, uh, you know, serve the purpose and fill it in. And, and it did. It did just what I was hoping it would. But after it was all done and I got it all uh, wire brushed off uh, with a wire wheel, uh, it looked like there was just enough room to get a second pass in there. And that's what I, that's what I did. So this second pass is probably a little bit more than an inch wide. Um, somewhere between an inch and an inch and a quarter wide. Huge pass uh, all the way around. Uh, I don't know I don't know about practicality. If anything, it, uh, it, it looks good. It looks like a big weld. It looks like it needs to be there. But uh, I thought it uh, looked pretty cool. Especially after I got the uh, wire wheel on it and cleaned it all off. Uh, that looked pretty nice. All right, with that out of the way, uh, this is the ring. I'm cutting this out, and this is going to go over the top, and this is what's going to uh, hold the Western Red Cedar uh, tabletop to the top of this. And I'm going to, I'm just cutting this out on the plasma cutter. You can see that uh, I had freehand drew, uh, drew a little sketch on there. You can see a white marker all the way around. And then when I put it in the computer and centered it all up uh, with the cutter, you can see it's almost, it's pretty close. It's just slightly off. Of course, the computer cutting it, everything nice and straight, not my freehand work. All right, with that out of the way, these are the brackets uh, cut out of the same material, the quarter inch plate. And I wanted to have something with the brackets that uh, kind of uh, resembled the gear on the bottom. So this is a gear shape. I just created a, uh, a full circle and cut four pieces out. I'm only using three, uh, three of them though. And uh, I just wanted to go ahead and just cut them all out. It made it, it kind of kind of made it look kind of like the, the base, you know, it had that gear shape to it. And I thought that was kind of interesting. All right, so now I've got those pieces done. I just want to take the uh, wire wheel and go around and remove the rust on this as well. And it wasn't too much. You know, it was just a light coat of rust on this that uh, it came off fairly simple. Very little dross after all the cutting. You can see I, I barely did anything there to clean anything off. It was a real clean cut on both pieces. 
the circle and the brackets. All right, so then I got that done and I'm drilling a quarter inch hole in the center of the three brackets right here. And uh, what I'm gonna be doing is sticking a piece of round bar stock in there, bending it at a 90 degree and be using that for, um, uh, for like a coat hanger or handbag or something like that. You'll see that a little bit later on. All right, after getting myself comfortable and uh, laid out where the brackets are going to go, you can see I've removed the paint on the bottle where they're going to go so I can get clean contact for welding. And I've got a scribe mark around uh, the bottle as well. Uh, that's giving me the flat uh, level service I'm looking for. And I'm just getting these tacked into place. Be sure everything is just right before I go ahead and just weld them all the way out. And for this, I'm going to be going down both sides all the way around. Keep everything nice and secure and give it a good look. All right, so this is what I was talking about. This is the uh, quarter inch round bar stock and I'm just cutting uh, three pieces to about four inches long. And the plan here is to bend them at a 90 degree angle. I should be able to feed them through uh, that hole and just kind of give it that uh, little bit of a 45 degree angle hook, just enough to be able to put a coat or a handbag or something on it. All right, I wanted a nice little tight bend, so I got the, uh, my little propane or uh, map gas torch right here whatever you want to call it and just put a little heat on it and got a kind of a tighter bend on it than what I normally would if I was just going to bend it over in the vise dry or cold I should say all right just sticking it through the hole like that and then uh, having a little bit stick out on either side that's the plan right there you can see that one that one doesn't appear to be straight and it probably isn't but after I got them all welded in position I went around and just bent them all down and be sure that uh, they got nice and even looking all right back with a mini mag drill right here a little brute and I'm drilling some half inch holes uh, around the outside of the round ring here and that is going to uh, provide us some anchoring uh, to the western red cedar I believe the guy is going to be using uh, some quarter inch uh, screws with some fender washers in there. He said something about he needed to have a little bit of space so it has room to expand and contract, uh, move around freely. You can see that uh, sits right over the top like there. And once I got everything nice and centered up, just a couple of tacks right there. And then on the underneath side, I provided uh, a couple of inch long or so beads on either side of the bracket and that's all I really uh, needed to do to hold that uh, secure in place. Alright so this was a little interesting here I knew when I chucked this up in there that uh, bad things could happen here it just didn't feel secure didn't feel right to me uh, I was parting this off because uh, the idea is just to cut, cut a portion of this off and you can see I even slowed the lathe down a little bit and I could just envision that cap just flying off the end once it went through. And in fact, that's exactly what it did. Kind of scary, but uh, hey, I got through it. No damage, no damage to the lathe. It could have been, could have been bad, but uh, worked out pretty good. All right, and then the disc brake goes on the top. And once I got everything nice and level, some tacks in it, and I got it where it needed to be. And then I just spun it off of there and welded it all the way around. You know, the idea the idea for this, I believe, for this thing to spin on and off is not nothing real, you know, critical for any reason. I think it's just more of a, uh, a look, just something different. Uh, the idea is maybe if they can screw it on and they want to take it off for any kind of trans 
transporting or anything like that. It just is a cool feature to have it be able to screw on and off part of the welding bottle uh, type of uh, deal there. All right, well, there it is. Uh, my work is done here in the shop and uh, we've got it moved over to the, uh, the bar where it's being installed. And there's that Western Red Cedar sitting over the top. And I'm just anchoring it to the ground with some, some uh, screw anchors. And then Mike, uh, Mike is the guy that actually finished this, uh, this uh, Red Cedar right here. And we got it all put together, got the top on it, and it worked out really good. This is a great little project, something different, a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my website, jimbosgarage.com. Follow me on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you all next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.